Yo, what's going on guys? Today we are flex testing the Razer Turbo R four seater. Right now behind me, it's up on my ramp in stock configuration with both sway bars connected. I'm gonna be removing both the front and rear and testing them individually, as well as the combined effect of both sway bars disconnected. Stay tuned. All right guys, so right now this machine is sway bars connected and I got one front tire off the ground, about 26 inches it's looking like. I do want to note that I'm not on perfect ground for this. It's a, it's a little, it's, it's not perfectly flat. It's not on concrete. Um, it was much easier for me to just set this test up like this. We're not trying to get an official RTI score or anything like that today. We just want to see how many inches off the ground uh, we can lift the tire uh, with the sway bars connected and disconnected. All right guys, here we go. This is just the rear sway bar disconnected. We got 33 inches of uh, vertical height off the ground with the front tire. So I'm just kind of marking in the center point of the contact patch of the tire because I feel that that's the most accurate uh, way to measure the height of the tire off the ground. All right guys, here we go. Front and rear sway bars disconnected. Pretty big improvement. I'm able to get pretty far up the ramp. I'm looking at a 37 and a half inch measurement to the ground. Again, this ground here isn't perfect, so there could be another inch or two even. Um, really just wanted to see what differences were had. Uh, I'll have to try to revisit this on concrete someday, maybe on an actual RTI ramp. This will give us a good idea on uh, what the difference is though, connected and disconnected. All right, so I got 26 inches with all the sway bars connected. I got 33 inches from the ground with just the rear disconnected and then disconnecting the front as well got me to 37 and a half inches off the ground. Again, might even be another inch or two higher than that because the ground starts to kind of go up towards this tree stump. What are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> this was the most practical means for me to do this test right now try to revisit on uh, flatter ground some other time. Right, it's kind of hard to get a tape measure in there, but the uh, from what I could roughly see with the measuring tape, we're about two inches, just over two inches away from bumping out this uh, side that's compressed on the ramp. So under more ideal circumstances, could be looking at full compression, which would be a little bit more articulation. 
And then here on the back, we're not on the bump stop yet either. But this one looks more like an inch. Yeah, the rear is probably about an inch and a quarter away from being fully bumped. So inch and a quarter in the rear and um, about two inches, two and a quarter inches in the front away from the bump stop. So we're not even fully into the bumps yet. Well, we're not even, we're that far from touching the bumps, let alone uh, compressing the bumps at all either. So there'll be a little bit more if this thing is like crossed up articulation wise on like flatter ground, you know, going over some like staggered rocks or something like that. But here in this ramp test, we're not quite able to get into the bumps. You know, it's possible if this was done with some speed or whatever, um, you might momentarily feel the bump stops. So another observation I had while I was driving up the ramp with just the rear sway bar disconnected, I noticed that the tires were able to keep better contact with the ground, but at the same time, the machine was tipping a lot more. It wasn't um, necessarily keeping it any more level. So it was definitely putting it on its side more so, and I'm interested to see how it is with just the front sway bar disconnected if it stays a little bit more level. And that's why I think that there's a possibility that just disconnecting the front is kind of the uh, good in between where you get a little bit more flex while keeping some of that stability and especially that uphill stability. Let's go ahead and find out. All right, here we go. This is rear sway bar connected and front sway bar disconnected. Front's flexing out pretty good. I will say the factory sway bars at least allow a reasonable amount of articulation. Of course, you're not getting the most, but you're getting a pretty decent balance between stability and um, articulation. Now one thing I noticed from, at least from the driver's seat perspective, is that going up the ramp, I much preferred the front sway bar disconnected versus the rear. It just felt like feeling the front articulate and keep the machine seemingly more level gave me a little bit more confidence while pulling up the ramp. And I got up the ramp just a little bit further. The tire's like three quarters of an inch further off the ground than when the rear was disconnected by itself and the front was still connected. So at least in my testing, I'm getting the same amount of articulation in the, uh, whether the front's disconnected or the rear's disconnected. And of course, when combining them, I got another uh, about four inches or so off the ground. Disconnecting just the front is probably the, uh, the best compromise. All right guys, that about wraps up this video. We got 26 inches with both sway bars connected. We got 33 with just the rear disconnected. We got 33 and three quarter with just the front disconnected. And then we got 37 and a half with both disconnected. Anyways guys, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. If you wanna see more from Jay's Garage, hit subscribe. And until the next video guys, I'll see you around. Peace.